in terms of inequality of inflation, uh, everyone feels the pain, but people with high incomes feel it a lot less than people with less money to spend. That's just the way it is. They Lower income people feel it more. Have you yourself in your life ever experienced this, this pain of the inequality of inflation? Well, sure. And you know, anyone who grew up in the in the United States in the 70s and early 80s, we know what high inflation felt like. And you could experience it in various ways depending on what your income was. And for me, I remember it very, um, uniquely, I think, in my own upbringing is that that was the time when we had to make real trade-offs about putting things back, not getting them. And what I take from that is I see it today. And that's the part that's really painful. Go to the store. You can walk out into any store, any part of your community, and you can watch people, and you'll see them as they approach the aisle, putting things back as they approach the checkout. Because they don't want to face the, the pain and embarrassment of, of having the checker say, you know, that's not enough, or having their, their time, you know, they put it back there. So what that is is it's an indignity. And I think of this as the indignity of inflation. It is the place where you're working, you're earning a living, Living, you're getting even wage increases, and your wage increase, even if it feels good, isn't mm. keeping up. So every day you're falling behind. You're on this treadmill. And that indignity of inflation is what's really cruel about inflation. It hurts people who have less. It hurts them more. And it has that sense that you're trying as hard as you can, and you still can't make it. So real basic question. In terms of the inequality of inflation, break it down a bit for us. Uh, it seems pretty obvious that, yeah, if you have less money, it's going to hurt you more, but in terms of more specifically, like what parts of the economy, who? Sure. So here's an easy way that I like to describe it, and it really is true. So think of necessities, food, you know, gasoline, and shelter. So housing, energy, sh and food. Those are the things where prices have been skyrocketing. And if you're a, in the lower part of the income distribution, you spend most of your disposable income your paycheck on those three items. So your trade-offs, which are taking place if you're in you know, urban areas and you have less, low and moderate income communities, you're making trade-offs that are between rent and gas for the car to go to work. Food and, and school clothes for your kids when they return to school. You know, the, the, are you gonna get a backpack and a lunchbox? Or are you only gonna get a backpack? Or are you gonna get nothing? And those are trade-offs that you know, really hurt groups. And what is remarkable now, because you think of the average wage is growing at around you know, 5%, and then inflation's growing at 8.5%, is we're not talking about you know, just a limited number of people in the United States who are having this indignity of trade-offs and inflation. We're talking very far up the income distribution. Right. We're talking about middle America, mm -hmm. you know, people who are earning a good living, thinking they've made it, mm -hmm. and they're being chipped away at. Yeah. So this indignity spreads much okay. wider than I think we really understand, and that's the importance of talking about it. And for those people, of course, many of them want to buy a house, but at the same time, we have rising rates, borrowing costs in order to really clamp down on inflation and that's really uh, making mortgage prices even higher so when you have rents rising when you have mortgage rates rising how does this really affect the individual well one of the things that that I learn when I go out and you really have to go out and talk to people you you have to rely on hearing from them not just introspection and here's what I hear from young families and people trying to buy a home or thinking about buying a home is that what's really hard is when they save their money they get a uh, approval on a loan and then they go out and they're in an auction like environment and they're being beat out for a house you know time and again not by just a few thousand dollars but by hundreds of thousands of dollars so cooling the, the house housing market, even if it means they're going to pay higher costs for the mortgage, actually puts them in a more competitive advantage. It's better to know the rules of engagement and being able to keep mm -hmm. up with them than to have it be so frenetic you can't even yeah. participate. So so I think that there is these trade-offs. Of course, you've mentioned them, but I think in, in the cases of the people I'm speaking with in my communities, and I'm, you know, Boise, Idaho, think of Boise, Idaho, Salt Lake City, Utah, Phoenix, Arizona. These are places where the housing market gets so tight that young families can't even begin to afford homes and they see an economy that's more sustainable and inflation coming down as welcome relief. 
I think, you know, to, to Sherry's point, that also goes to future wealth creation, right? The impossibility of creating wealth in an environment where, as you say, these costs related to housing are going up. How worried are you about the other puzzle piece, right? That if the demand constraint continues to play out, companies are going to start laying off. We know that it is the lower skilled, lower paid workers that are impacted first. Well, right now I'm not seeing that. Certainly we do um, want to focus on how this is impacting the labor market, and I spend a lot of time looking at that, but I'm not seeing that and I'm not hearing that. What I'm hearing is that workers have jobs are plentiful, right? They can go out and find jobs, and even when a worker gets laid off, they they find quickly another job. What they really feel, though, is that inflation's breaking the back of their well-being, even when they have work. So, you know, firms want to catch up. They have a dearth of workers. They're still trying to fill slots that they've had open for months. So I think this rebalancing still leaves the economy with jobs. It just brings inflation down, and it creates a more sustainable economy where people don't have to frantically figure out what are they going to do next month. I think just settling the economy down, bringing inflation down, restoring some sustainability to growth really helps everyone. You know, I want to come back to something you mentioned, but I think this is so Mary Daly. You call it the put-back index, and you just mentioned that. You know, you, you go to a grocery store, and you watch what people are doing. I know sometimes you, you talk to people and marry that with food prices. There's, the U.S. is everyone suffering. Of course, in, in less developed nations and poorer countries, it, it, is, it is much more serious. It's devastating. Yes. So how are food, because I think in the producer prices, that was one of the, the signs that was worrisome. This report today, it showed that wholesale food prices are rising, and that's going to make it even more expensive at the grocery store. So marry your, marry, marry your put back index with what's really going on with food prices right now. Well, you know, that's, um, that's a great question, because if you go to a grocery store and you just observe, People are making choices long before they ever get to the checkout market. They're going down the meat counter, right? And you start with the, the prime cuts, or you start with the, the leaner cuts, or you used to buy beef for three meals a week, and now you move to chicken, and then you move to, okay, we're not going to have meat as often, wow. or we're going to, you know, we're going to not invite as many guests to the to the Labor Day barbecue that's coming up because we, we don't really have enough resources to do that, so we'll all just go out and party afterwards. Those are decisions yeah. that people are making. The, we're, we're, you know, in the the longer down that trade-off it goes, the more painful it is. So what was really painful when, is when I witness uh, parents having to tell their children, no, I know mm -hmm. we get that usually, but we're not going to get that. Or they, they go to the place and they share one soda for four kids, even though every kid wants their own soda. It really is, I mean, these are hard things. And when you start making those trade-offs against you know, everything else, it makes it impossible. Okay. Well, quick final question. Sure. Is that, in a sense of what we've been talking about then, is why it's so important no matter what the cost, no matter how painful it is in the short term, it's so important for the Federal Reserve to get inflation down. So it is essential we get inflation down. It is a commitment we have made at the Federal Reserve to bring inflation down. People want jobs, but they also want low and stable inflation. We have to give them both.